The orange. Optical? Yes. We're getting mortar. I got invincible. Whoa. I will. There's another turret on the other side. Alright, alright. What is hurting? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, what is hurting? Oh my god. Dude, I'm locked oh, up. Why is this okay, behaving okay. so bad? Oh, snap, I fellow godlies and Warframe enthusiasts around the world, it is yet again time to add yet another entry to the Warframe God Build series in the form of Gara the Glass Cannon. Now the way to farm her is relatively straightforward and self-explanatory. You go to Plains of Eidolon, or better yet known as Cetus, and you grab the bounties that drop the appropriate pieces once completing the quest for her initial blueprint. Because it's so simplistic, I need not explain it anymore, I'm just going to jump straight into the abilities. Now when build testing for Gara, I found a lot of interesting mechanics that make her kit really synergize with each other. So before I go to explaining that, I just want to explain the powers in general. Her first ability, Shattered Lash, it lashes out with a stream of shattered glass. You can hold this to do additional damage and sweep enemies off their feet, however I would say that it's only useful up until like level 75 gameplay. It can be combined with Mass Vitrify for some interesting results, but it requires her second ability, Splinter Storm. Gar's armor splinters into a maelstrom of shattered glass that slices enemies and impairs their weapons. Allies who contract the cloud are fortified against damage. This is essentially Gar's form of damage mitigation, much like Neja or Rhino, but it's right between those two actually. Just a little bit less efficient than a Rhino, but a lot more efficient than a Neja's ability. So Spectralodge, her third ability, it traps enemies in a carousel of mirrors, forcing them to attack visions of their true selves. Destroyed mirrors damage their attackers, as does the collapse of the carousel. I just wouldn't use this at all, because it, it aside from level 75 and 100 gameplay, uh, anything beneath that, it's fine, but going up to level 75 or 100 gameplay, you're essentially just going to be wasting energy, because these things die too quickly, it doesn't do CC like the the web would tell you it does and it's just it's just kind of useless I, I fear as though it needs some type of buff mass vitrify on the other hand is everything that spectral should be and more it, it in fact it gives uh, frost's snow globe a run for its money so with mass vitrify her fourth and ultimate ability you create an expanding ring of molten glass that slowly crystallizes enemies who enter when the expansion is complete the ring hardens to block weapons fire Using Shattered Lash, we'll smash the ring and send Razor Shard Blast flying outward. This was what I was talking about. You can use her first ability, Shattered Lash, to smash the Mass Vitrify, and it will buff the damage output of your Splinter Storm. So, in the event that you use Splinter Storm for your damage mitigation, as you should, regardless of what build setup you're using, you can cast Mass Vitrify, which will reset your duration for Splinter Storm. So, you heard me right, every time you cast Mass Vitrify while Splinter Storm is active, you will reset the duration for Splinter Storm. But keep in mind that Splinter Storm doesn't have as big of a duration as Mass Vitrify. So if you're on the Plains of Eidolon and you're doing long distance engagements, you're gonna have to keep an eye out on your cooldowns in case you're using Shattering Lash to amp up your damage of Splinter Storm with Mass Vitrify. Shattered Lash can destroy your Mass Vitrify, and when it does, it will build upon Splinter Storm's DPS. There's a YouTube video up right now, but I'm relatively certain because I build tested it and it didn't seem to be working for me, so it's most likely been nerfed by the time this video has been released. However, if it hasn't been nerfed, then what I would say is that Digital Extreme shouldn't nerf this because I feel as though it takes a lot of energy and a lot of time to pull off. And how this works is you cast your Mass Vitrify and you break it with your first ability and you keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again which stacks the damage with no upward cap. And as long as you keep Splinter Storm active, 
this buff will stay on you indefinitely. And since Mass Vitrify also refreshes the duration of Splinter Storm, this makes three of her powers in her kit synergize really well with each other. So I hope that Digital Extremes doesn't nerf that if by chance they haven't nerfed it already. And if they have nerfed it, then I feel as though it's a very unnecessary nerf. I don't at all know why Digital Extremes is so concerned with balancing when none of our enemies are complaining. There's nobody on the other side of the game that's like, hey, that's overpowered. And it's not overpowered in my opinion because it takes a lot of time and energy to build up and it's, it, the payoff is definitely worth it. Now because I mentioned the long distance engagements for her n initial abilities, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and tell you that Gara is primarily meant for melee. That's what she excels at doing. She's the best at doing that. So I'm going to cover the melee build before I even talk about her initial build because it's, it's crucial. It's essential that you choose a really well working melee build to go with Gara. Otherwise, you're just not going to see the best out of Gara. That's right. You need a weapon to complement this build. It, it, it's vital to her build that you use a melee that complements her. So that's why I'm using the new Zaw weapons. I made a machete style, which I named the Zangetsu. I have Cyclone Kraken, Blood Rush, Gladiator Might, Gladiator Vice, Gladiator Rush, Voltic Strike, Violent Scourge, Pine Fury, and Pressure Point. Now because the Gladiator mods are new, I'm just gonna briefly explain them. Gladiator Might does plus 60% critical damage, which stacks with any critical mod that you put on here. The set bonus is 90% critical chance, and it stacks with combo multiplier. This alone, plus its uh, set bonus, is going to be pretty incredible. Never mind the fact that you have Gladiator Vice, which is plus attack speed, and we have a Prime Fury here, which is more attack speed, so these two will complement each other and stack. Gladiator Rush increases combo duration, which essentially re replaces body count. And we all know how well body count works in tangent with Blood Rush. Plus you got your corrosive combo. Can't go wrong with this weapon. This weapon alone on any other frame is just going to decimate. Never mind the fact that we're also using Gladiator mods on Gara herself. Speaking of the mods for Gara, I'm going to skip right into this build and say that because we didn't put anything for health return on our initial weapon, it's going to be vital that we include a rejuvenation with a coaction drift. This is going to make us regen, but it's not going to make us regen as quickly as an Oberon Reforge, so don't rely upon it. In fact, I would go so far as to say you should be casting your ult because it has invincibility frames every time you cast it. So in the event that you get poisoned with toxin, and, or you're bleeding, or you're on fire, and you have low HP, and you know you're going to die, cast your fourth ability because it, it will essentially prevent you from going down. And in the event that you don't have enough energy to cast that, well, you're, you're pretty screwed because Gladiator Finesse isn't even going to help you. But Gladiator Finesse is really nice because it drains energy to stop lethal damage with plus 60% energy efficiency, which works well with Streamline and Prime Flow. Prime Flow is going to provide that you have more life to drain from because you're using your energy pool as your health pool, which is really nice. Energy conversion is here because it buffs the effectiveness of your damage mitigation. The higher your power strength, the more damage you mitigate from what you're taking. Prime Continuity is specifically so your Mass Vitrify can last longer. And then Gladiator Resolve stacks with uh, Vitality. Unfortunately, we don't have Vitality here, so it's essential that we include Gladiator Resolve, which is 180% health. Gladiator Aegis is plus 45% armor, which also stacks with Steel Fiber, provided we have 110% armor, which gives us a total of 318 armor. That's really, really good. And it's going to make her quite a bit tanky uh, with her powers included. Now, if you're on our Facebook fan page, you could ask anybody there. The only reason why it took so long for me to release this build is because I just, for the life of me, could not figure a primary weapon to synergize with this loadout. And finally, I arrived at the conclusion that I should revisit the Opticore and do the build for it. I included Infected Clip, Stormbringer, Vile Acceleration, Serration, Split Chamber Point Strike, Vigilante Armaments, and Heavy Caliber. 
Vigilante Omnance is another one of the set mods, however I'm only using one of them because it grants plus 60% multi-shot, which will additively benefit Split Chamber as it has a 90% multi-shot. Uh, the set bonus is a plus 5% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. That's going to help Opticore a little bit. It's a 5% increase, so it's not that big of a deal. We're not using the full set, but it works really well here. You outright need Vile Acceleration because the DPS of Opticore is so low because the fire rate is, is also low. Heavy Caliber doesn't really negatively affect Opticore, which is nice because you get that 165% damage increase, also with the 165% damage increase from Serration. Oftentimes I find this thing outperforming snipers in the hands of Gara. Unless you're using this with Mirage or Chroma, it's not going to be very impressive, and I would say that it's not necessarily a god build, but what it does effectively is it escorts you to in-game content. Say you're in the midst of a, a survival. This is good to use up to like level 75 gameplay when you then start relying on your melee exclusively because spawns are increased and the damage that the enemies are taking is a whole lot more. So I would just put I would just put away your Opticore indefinitely and never resort to it again. But that's exactly where uh, Gara excels is doing defense missions, survival, any endurance run that sees her in close quarters, that's where she excels. Opticore is primarily used for Planes of Eidolon, and that's what I would stick to if I were to use Opticore. Same thing can be said about the Sicarus Prime. I absolutely love this weapon now that it has been buffed. The Riven Disposition is a 5 out of 5, so that ought to tell you something. It's just as useful now as a Lex Prime or a Arca Cisco or Pandero, it's really really nice, it does excellent damage. I had about 7 of the 8 mods installed while I was doing Planes of Eidolon in-game content, and it was just wiping the floor with everything. It was disarming the Ogmas, and when I say disarming, I'm not talking about weapons, I'm talking about its armor. It was debuffing that armor and stripping it off completely after about, I'd say, 3 or 4 shots. Uh, it takes it out really, really quick. This is an incredibly viable weapon after its buff, so I would highly recommend building this way and taking it into in-game content as it will not disappoint you. All in all, Gara is a solid, mediocre frame. She's a return back to basics of Warframe. She doesn't have really anything unique to her other than a passive ability that blinds enemies, which makes her melee effectiveness dramatically increase. Now, what I will complain about is the mass vitrify. Sometimes if you're doing Planes of Idol on escort missions where you're taking a drone from one point to the other, if you cast a mass vitrify, the drone will either get stuck on the inside or stuck on the outside and potentially provide troll players a means to infuriate all the other people in their lobby. I really hope that they alter this in some way to make the drone like slip through the mass vitrify because it's, it's kind of unnerving. I like how essentially she's, she's a lot of different Warframes rolled into one. I wouldn't agree with the internet by saying that she's a CC frame. She's more or less a alternative to Excalibur with a lot more defensive abilities. All in all, I like the fact that she's mediocre. I like the fact that she's not too overpowered, not too underwhelming. She's right there in that happy medium, right in that sweet spot. I've had a lot of fun leveling her up. I had a lot of fun doing this video, and if you learn something from it, then it always helps if you smash that like button, comment, share, subscribe, do as I always encourage you to do. Plus, check out the trailers that I've been doing, because although it doesn't have anything to do with Warframe lore, it has something to do with the Exidium lore, which is something I'm all about. And I also do speed paints for the Exidium universe, so that's something to check out. I'll provide links to those at the end of this video, and until next time, this has been Vance signing out. Peace.